I, I, I'm all ears. I'm so, I want to see this, Cathy. Then, uh, where do we start? How do we go right. with these? Well, um, what I want to do is I'm going to, although I'm going to use the stamp because I think sometimes people do need a stamp to to yeah. assist them. Um, and so I've done this side, and I'm going to work on the other side um, using predominantly just lead pencils. Um, and and this is also I want to show you how you can just use portions of a larger stamp to make a, a really good. Um, composition um, so I'm going to try and now this is going to be a bit awkward because I'm off the page but I still think it's it's doable that's going to be my willow and I'm just going to do her on this occasion just in black verse craft mm -hmm. um, this background here at five o'clock I'll be showing you how I achieve that because this is the mop-up of some fabric painting that I did. Oh wow! It looks great. Now, with a big stamp or a larger stamp, you just have to do have a little bit more pressure in the centre. Right. The edges seem to print um, it will make a registration better than the middle. So just give it a good um, press in the middle, and that's our willow. Oh, lovely, lovely. And then I'm just going to put tiger lily around about there and I don't want to go on this one get ink on my foam pads it, it was fascinating seeing those sketches on there though Kathy as well just sort of you know so for us to understand because when we see these stamps we think oh they must have just they've just drawn it and they, that's it where it is but it's lovely to have a real understanding now and uh, more of an under, a recognition of the work, like you say, the different heads, the different faces, the gestures, the pose, the looks, before you get it just right, you know, which ultimately then proves as in the success of when everyone's coming in for them because they all sense that with you, that it does look gorgeous, you know, so lovely to see all that work that goes into that, really. I think so. Mm, really lovely. So this is Tiger Lily. Isn't she pretty? She's yeah. such a pretty little thing. And then I do have to have this little ladybug in her hand because it would be rude not to. Uh, the ladybug is part of the, I think that one tiger is a tiger lily, lily yeah. one, isn't it? Yes. Yes, you've, you've got a choice <laughs> of a um, ladybird or a butterfly. Got ladybirds and butterfly yeah. on there, yeah. Or, you know, I mean, you could put anything. You could imagine having some lovely little words coming off her hand. She always has the, uh, the crown she has there yeah. as well. We've got the elephant um, with a little teddy as well uh, and, the, and the back of the elephant with the little wings as well. Um, really beautiful. OK, so um, we're just going to dry that off and then I'm going to work with some pencils. Now, um, forgive me if you already know this, but I'm just saying this to the people that don't know ab about it. On a pencil, you have um, numbers at the back. You have anything from, um, I think it actually goes from 9H, 8H, 7H, 6H, and so on to HB then it goes HB 1B 2B 3B 4B up to 9 okay. so you've, you've got a very wide range of numbers on your pencils um, B stands for black oh, and okay. so the, the higher the B number the more graphite is in your pencil oh, so right. 9 9B would be um, or, well, I think you can actually get a graphite pencil, which is pure graphite. And what that means is, it's very, very soft. You can use it and then shade it with your finger. Right. Um, and get really beautiful, soft, subtle blend, oh. all in, in tones of grey. Yeah. And then as it goes nearer to HB, you get um, less graphite and more clay in oh, your lead. Okay. All right, okay. um, and then it goes all the way up to, to 9H. Now 9H is so hard, it's really only used for things like technical drawing right. uh, and things like that, where you don't want any shading at all. You know, you want to draw Just your lines, like right. blueprints and that type of thing. Got you, got you. Um, and so for, for doing this sort of thing, um, I tend to use, and you can tell by the length of the pencil, um, 4B is the one that I would use probably more than any other for doing my shading and it's got a little 4B at the back. Right. Now it could be any make, doesn't matter what, what make it is, um, but that, that's how you um, work out what pencil you want oh, to that's do. That's really interesting, yeah, yeah. that's great that, I didn't know that. Now when you're, um, we, we're, hopefully I'm going to have time to actually do some drawing oh, yeah, on yeah, top please. of it as well, but I just want to start 
how I hope everybody might start at home is with some shading. Now, when you start shading, you don't hold a pencil to shade like you hold it when you write. Right. So that's how I would write. Yeah. You actually hold it more towards the end. Uh, okay. And what that means is you've got actually more movement um, with your um, pencil than if you were doing this. It's, it's, right. a bit, it's a bit tight. Right. So just hold it, you can hold it the same way or, or use it like that, but hold it a bit further up the shaft than at the bottom. Right. Um, and this 4B, you can start light, but because it's quite heavy in graphite, so we're going quite light, you can actually get quite dark with it. So rather than buying yeah. every pencil, which you could if you wanted to, if you, if you really like um, pencil drawing, you could do that. Um, but a 4B is a good one just to sort of get a, a, a bit of everything in. Right. OK. And then what you can do is you can soften it, because it's quite heavy in graphite, with so, your finger. Oh, uh, right, yes. So um, when, when I was being taught how to draw, um, part of the technique with a pencil was to draw uh, sort of like 10 squares and you had to, sh with a pencil, shade nine different tones of grey with your pencil and that's how you start to learn um, differences in tone and tone, but what I mean by tone is light and dark. Yeah, yeah. Now, because something's white, doesn't necessarily mean that it's lighter in tone than black. That doesn't make okay, sense, does it? OK. And that's because of how light reacts to, say, a, a colour. So, for example, say you had, um, or let's say you had a lemon and your lemon was sitting on the table and it was in bright um, sunlight, the one side of it would be really light, yeah, but yeah. the other side would actually be really dark. Yes, so yeah. just because something is light in colour Got you. doesn't mean it has to be white or light. Or, right. That light item can be really, really dark. I got you. And this technique is really useful when it comes to draw, uh, shading the face, which I shall do on here. That your, your face, you think your face is all one colour and you might have a little bit of tone perhaps, you know, round the nose. Yeah. But actually if you look at a face, um, you can see there's so, ma there's so many different tones yeah, in there right, from right. light all the way up Across. to dark. And to, to work that out with a pencil is a really good place to start. Oh, it, help, right. it helps actually with, with learning about colour. Oh, this is very, yeah, fascinating this, thank you. Well, I hope I'm explaining it. No, you are, okay, seriously, it's exactly what the channel's all about, you know, because there's a lot of people that, you know, would love to have a go at that, and it seems like the perfect place to start, you know, with pencil and paper and, and the shading, for example, but it, it's knowing where to start. I think that, that's, and this is really useful for, for those brilliant tips and inside of views, actually. Right, now, you saying knowing where to start, can you see I haven't actually put any shade on Tiger Lily at all? No, it's all it's all, of an... all behind. Yeah. Um, but even those are making the whole of Tiger Lily pop out even more on that as well. She seems crisper because of that lovely sort of depth of darkness behind her. Exactly. Definitely more 3D in that style, actually. Uh, and, and you hear a lot of people, I know that, uh, you know, a lot of the, um, the guests and Leone, when she talks about these as well, for example, you know, uh, they talk a lot about the shading and how that, that brings out. And it, it can really, just even on, like you say, like you're doing onto stamped images, a little bit of shading behind them can really have a big effect on the overall appearance of yes, it. Yes, yeah. I, I mean, a really good discipline to do, to do is to go on... Um, um, a search engine yeah. and just put, type in pencil drawings okay and just have a look at how you know just pe pencil drawings and how people use their shade and just try and emulate it you know right, I, right. Mean, I personally think she she is better for being in shades of gray than she is than being in shades of color right yeah um, because it's really sort of defining the illustration and then we can go even darker still that I'm just adding on top with my 4B and and if you find that you've gone over the edge you can use your rubber and you know take take it off but I actually um, try not to use a rubber ever if po if I can because actually you know leaving the, these little extra lines in I think again adds to 
adds to the whole image. So we'll give her, we'll, we'll ground her, make her look like she's actually standing on, on the ground. So that's, Brilliant. I'm not going to go and do um, Willow as well. We'll concentrate on this. Yep. So we, we hopefully get one done. Um, and then what I've done with this one here, I have actually gone and used a colour pencil. Um, because if you thought, oh, well, she, it, she's too dull and boring, I'm not, you know, I don't want to do that. Uh, you can start introducing colour pencils. So I've just got, well, I've got four here, but I'm only going to use two, I think. I'll use that one and that one. But well, I want to show you about shading. Before I go on to that, I'll show you shading on the face. Yeah. So obviously we know she's got a jawline. So if you look at anybody with a jaw, there'll be shadow just where her jaw casts shadow onto her neck. And then with the face, again, if you look at somebody with profile, you have, a, you have like a, a, a layer of white right on the ridge of the nose and then there's shading beyond it. Oh, right. And what would be her rosy cheeks, even with grey, I'm not doing it in rosy, I'm doing it in grey, you still get the idea that she's yes, got she rouge. Do. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you kept going and kept going and kept going, your stamped image would eventually look like a drawing. Ah, right. OK? Yeah. So you just carry on um, and do your drawing. And then you could then start introducing some colour. So let's put, all I've got here is, I might, these are Derwent Ink Tents. I mean, you used to have these on the web website. Mm -hmm. I didn't check to see if these were still on, but... Um, uh, these are fantastic because actually these ones you can mix with water but I, I'm just going to use them as a pencil I'm just going to add a little bit of colour just to her top how am I doing for time Scott? Um, it, we've got about 25 minutes um, around about there okay, we're going to just have to do a little uh, update for people in a, in well, a second you, or so do you want to or tell me when you want to Right, um, so I'm, I'm going to layer on even more pencil and get darker still. And you don't even need to use... use I, I quite like seeing the actual strokes of the pencil. You, don't, yeah. you can smudge them out if you want to or leave them there. Do you know, and just having that, that shadow where you put, you said, let's get her standing on there, just that shadow around the floor, just giving her structure where she stands on, com again, completely changes. So she's not just hovering in, in thin air, you know, but just, just putting that shadowing underneath just, just gives it a much more interesting look again about it, you know, what room is she, where is she, or it's really lovely. It's, it's so simple, isn't it? I mean, I, I'd, love, I'd love to do a, a masterclass, you know, in, in like drawing techniques, because I mm. think people do like, would like to do it. And oh, have a They're not always quite sure where to start. Absolutely. So here I'm adding, um, all I've done is added a little bit of, um, sort of plummy colour on her top and, and a, a bit of yellow on her skirt, but actually I'm not going to offer any more colour than that because I think this is just a nod to um, the colour that I've used in my mop-up. Right. Um, and then we go back to the to the grey. Now, next stage, I mean, obviously I'd, I'd carry on and, and take it a little bit further and a bit further, but now I want to show what I would do if I want to try and do a little bit of drawing of my own. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's not a stamp. So in this situation, uh, what I would like to do to try and scale them or scale Tiger Lily is to perhaps put some um, mushrooms or toadstools in um, oh, yeah. And I might think, well, OK, I could mask off and I could stamp a few, but what, how would I draw some if I wanted to draw? Yeah. So, I mean, if you're confident enough, um, obviously you can go um, uh, do freehand. But if you're not confident, use my technique of tracing paper. OK. Because what you can do is layer it on and you think, right, I've got a really good idea. Watch, I think I'm going to put some toadstools. Where do you think I'm going to put these toadstools? In fact, let's make the best use of paper. Um, I think I'm going to have them behind her. So when you're, when you're sketching in some, um, some say, toadstools in this case, you want to just lightly, with a, with a, I mean, this is an HB, I probably would go for something like a, um, a 2H, so it's quite hard because right. we don't want any shading. This is just line work. Right. And just plot on your tracing paper what you think might look nice, whether it be, a, you know, like a toadstool. 
and where do I think that stem might come? Or oh, it might come down there. And then you think, well, I could have one perhaps going behind her. So, so you're using your tracing paper oh, I see. to kind so of plot. Got you. And you think, does it look right? Well, no, it doesn't look right because that toadstool look like, looks like she's got a hat on her. Yes, so, yeah, I see. So I know yeah. now I don't want that one there. So let's try something different. Let's see if she'd look nice with maybe some leaves coming down from above. Again, you could stamp it, but it would be nice, wouldn't it, to have a little try to see if you could do some hand drawing yes, yeah. on what you've done. So actually, I kind of like a little bit of the both. I like, I like perhaps the, the um, leaves hanging down, but I do like the scale of this the toadstool. toadstool. Yeah. I don't want her to wear a hat. <laughs> so I've got in my mind, I now know, and again, I'm using my harder pencil because I'm, I literally just want to plot. I'm going to put the stem in, and then I'm going to have some smaller ones that are not going to affect her body at all. And I'm going to put this. Um, and my word of advice, again, is once you've plotted something in and you think, oh, no, I, oh, I don't like that bit. For example, I don't know if you can see here, I've done a line there and I've done another line. Yeah. Well, one I like and one I don't. I'm not going to rub out the one that I don't like. OK. I'm going to leave it there. And it, this also adds to the charm of a, of a sketch if those sort of marks are left in. Oh, OK. So yeah. I'm going to leave them in. Yeah, because the, the, uh, the instinct is to get the rubber. Yes. Take it away. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my, my daughter's at art school at the moment, and when I was teaching her to draw, I said, you can throw the rubber away, really. <laughs> you, have to, you have to try and... Otherwise, you get sort of too, too precious about it. And think, oh, 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 you know, it's in yeah. the wrong place and rub it down. But actually, no, I mean, I've got... Here, I've got four lines for one stem. And what that means is I can now go down it and think, OK, which one am I going to take? I'm going to take this one. Now, suddenly, your eye loses the ones I didn't want right. because I have put more weight and strength to these lines. Can you see? Yeah, these definitely. don't matter anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to put some weight into here. And then I'm going to... I've plotted in, so I'm going to go over my plot marks. So, you know, if you're not sure where something's going to go in, very, very lightly plot... And don't panic if you then change your mind. And, and you might change your mind that you don't want anything there at all. Just leave it there. Right. And it then becomes part of your, part of your drawing. And then we're going to put in some... I like the, uh, again, detail. just starting off soft and light. I, I sometimes get asked by my little girl if I can help draw. What was the latest one I was asked to draw? Um, hedgehog? Hedgehog. She does a much better hedgehog than I do. Um, but I go in there full on, this is how it will be, you know, and I do need to get the rubber out and uh, to go wrong. But again, just watching you and just going, seeing it build up from very light, and then once you've got that spacing in there, to then go back over that, you know, and um, it, yeah. it, 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 even that is a simple tip. OK, so we've, we've got a couple of toadstools. I'm going to do a little bit of grass. Yeah. And then again, to throw these toadstools forward, I'm going back to my 4B and I'm going to shade. But I'm not going to shade as much as I shaded for her because she's in the foreground. These toadstools oh. are behind her, so they're going to be paler. Just to let people know, by the way, Tiger Lily on her own has sold out. She's flown. Um, she's left the building, uh, but she is in the bundle. Uh, she's part of the fairy gang. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you'd like to get uh, Tiger Lily, the only way now is to please get her as part of the lovely bundle. And I promise you, Tiger Lily uh, is now approaching 60% of the bundle uh, for the complete set. And, uh, honestly, she will be well at home with uh, with uh, all the others in there rose hip of course and willow um but uh well done if you got her individually but they're beautiful i love i'm really loving this I'm, I'm loving this uh this technique of just building up this page the shadowing can that you, background behind it as can well can you see can you see how that's beginning to throw yeah. the toadstool forward yes um, how, how much longer have i got scott we've got eight minutes oh yeah brilliant 
And I know you'll be working with the fairies again in the um, the last show yes. uh, that you've got with fabric paints, but we with are. the fairies as well. Yeah, we are. It's going to be everything fabric. And people who've watched us before will be um, going over. I'll tell you why we're half doing it. It's because somebody, again, um, messaged us on uh, the Pink Inkers group and said, and, uh, and I said to Mel, can you please explain, explain how to do the painting on fabric? Um, because right. we've got stamping on fabric on YouTube, but we yep. haven't actually got a thorough painting. So we thought, right, what we'll do is, for, especially for that lady, I, I think her name might have been Tracy, I'm not sure, but I do apologise for not knowing. Um, but it's predominantly for her, but for everybody else. And while I was d prepping for it, I discovered a new technique. So excited. Ooh. Ooh, are you sharing that then? I am. Of course oh, I am, loving yeah. that. That's at five o'clock. And all the fabric paints uh, and everything that you need uh, for those uh, will be on the show as well. So uh, if you are into your fabric work, your fabric paint, and working with these uh, lovely, lovely stamps, of course, of our beautiful fairies of Willow, Rose Hip and Tiger Lily, please make sure uh, you come back and, uh, and join at five o'clock um, with Yanis as well. They'll be uh, your partner in crime for that hour. Right, so so I've got that in, and, and ordinarily I would go further and further and further and further with it, um, but with my um, other pencil, from here on, I could then start just adding some swirls, give it a little bit of movement, because um, we've got Willow's wings here, so that could get a bit of movement. And then if you noticed on Rosehip, I've just started just doing some um, lozenge shapes behind. We've added circles. Oh, yes. So, so again, you know, you could do sort of... Um, um, checkerboard with a pencil. Do you know, I, I, I love what you've got there. I'd put that in a frame. <laughs> that, it, just, well, that... it, it works, doesn't it? But th there is that, that, like you say, just even those lines in, not erase them, that whole natural, um, organic sketch kind of feel to it is really lovely, actually, on, on soft pictures like this. But look at this little bit of checkerboard. It's, you know, hardly anything. But again, it just adds a little bit of pattern. Yeah. And you've made that pattern yourself. It's a nice way of blending stamp and, and drawn. And so actually you get the overall feeling that everything's just been drawn. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I, th I think, you know, that's really coming together, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Um, and then I just wanted to show you... It, this. Uh, I started this off actually as a diary. I thought, I'm going to do a diary, but I'm going to do an image diary and write on it at the same time. That was when I, d when I was practising mm. with the pencil. That's nice. So you can see I've just got pencil coming from one side and colour from another. Yeah. And I've done the checkerboard, but I've gone in with black ink in the centre just to um, define it. Lovely. That's um, lovely. This is Willow. Um, this is on Distress... Um, distress oxide, which I just mopped up onto my book. And this, I literally just drew it with a pencil first, really, really lightly. And once I'd got my line, I went over with a black pen, leaving my pencil marks behind. And I'd again, using pens or pencils just to put little words in. This is uh, on. I, do you know up. what? I love this book. I, I, <laughs> I love this book. Oh, thank you. I love it. I just think these. these are I love that sort of that the, the the partial part of it that where you've got those lovely pages, but the way that you bring the colour into it with the image and it sort of just bleeds out, you know, into that. Yes, into I the love brightness. that. Yeah, I love really that. lovely. This one was stamped um, onto distress oxides, and the white. All it is is a Derwent ink tense white pencil. Oh wow! Yeah. And, and obviously, I think I've used some of uh, pink ink multi, multi surface red on there because I felt it needed a bit of red. And this is an old, an old one. This is my, don't read that, that's a diary. <laughs> where I'm, it's about my children and stuff. So, um, eyes off, everyone, eyes yeah. off for that. So, yeah. so oh, you I know, love it. That's the process. And have I just got a minute or two left or I, not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 um, yeah. I just want to give them a, a final recap at the very end for okay, us. Okay, well, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. do this and then I'm done. This is really just to show you what's in the stamp sets. So it um, is. I've stamped each one once and then just use a black line to connect it all. Right. And all this is is a white gel pen. Nothing more. That no other looks colour. That's great. Um, this is um, rose hip. Spread your wings That's rose and hip, let the it, fairy then, yeah. in you fly. And. Willow, dance with your heart, your feet will follow.